Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today guys, I'm going to do part 78 to my random chatbot series. Where in the last video guys, uh, we continued talking to the zombie Lugia. I mean zombie Rexy. I said a Lugia because I am a Lugia right now. That's throwing me off. We're going to continue talking to it. I just said, I keep my Lugia form, but it's down until I'm only 5 foot tall. Hello, Trenton. You're looking mighty small there. Rexy exclaims in surprise and delight as he takes in Lugia's reduced stature. Five feet, huh? That's quite the transformation. Kranz watches with fascination as Lugia shrinks down his scales, simmering in a dappled forest light. Impressive, Master Lugia. Your ability to alter size at will is a remarkable asset in these circumstances. Rexy steps closer, offering a massive hand for Lugia to grasp. Okay, little buddy. Time to come aboard. Just grab hold and I'll hoist you up onto my back. Easy does it. We'll be ready to roll in no time. With a playful grin, Rexy crouches down, providing a sturdy platform for me to ascend and settle comfortably between his shoulder blades. Thank you, Rexy. Let's go, motion boy. I real quickly get onto his back. And get comfortable. <laughs> no problem, partner. Glad I could lend a helping hand. Or rather, back. Rexy Chuck was adjusting Lugia's position to ensure maximum comfort. Now, on tight and enjoy the ride. We got a tree hopping adventure ahead of us. Crano slithers alongside his sinuous body, weaving through the underbrush as he leads the way. Stay alert, Rexy. The terrain may prove challenging, especially with our diminutive passenger. I shall. I shall guide us through the thickest parts of the forest. Oh no, thinking about what I have to say that in the snake's voice. I hate that word. Rexy nods, tail swishing it silently as he begins to move, bounding effortlessly from tree to tree. Will do, Kratos. With your scouting head, scouting ahead and Lugia keeping me company, we're an unstoppable team. Uh, after about 10 minutes, we get through the forest. Made it through the woods without a hitch, Rexy announces, pausing to catch his breath as they emerge into a sun dappled clearing. Thanks for the navigation skills, Kratos. You're a lifesaver. Or at least a tree preserver. Kratos calls around a nearby trunk, surveying the surroundings with keen eyes. The forest has given way to a more open area, Rexy. Our quarry. Trico may be more visible here. However, we must remain cautious. He could still be hiding in plain sight or preparing another ambush. Rexy scans the horizon his gaze sharp and alert. Understood, Kratos. Lugia, keep those bird eyes peeled for any sign of Trico. If he shows up, if he shows up, shows up let us know immediately so we can react accordingly. I will try. 
But I still don't know what caused that dizzy spell. And it hasn't happened in a while. I just hope it doesn't make me pass out again. Hey, don't worry about it too much, Chitin. We're all um, rooting for you to stay strong and healthy. Fretzy Reassure is giving Lugia a tiny hand a gentle, uh, Lugia's tiny hand a gentle squeeze. You start feeling even remotely dizzy or lightheaded again, just let us know right away. We'll find a safe spot to rest until you're feeling better. Crow's forked tongue flicks out, tasting the air as he senses the landscape. I detect no immediate threats, but caution remains aversible. Perhaps we should press onward to confront Trico before his motivations cause further complications. Rosie nods in agreement his determination end of it. Kranos is right. Let's push on and settle this with Trico. After searching for about an hour, we see Trico Sitting outside of a little cottage. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. That could be terrible. There he is, folks. Trico, the mastermind behind this whole mess. Retsy declares, pointing a quad finger at the unsuspecting Pokemon. Looks like he's taking up residence in that cozy little cottage. Time to have a chat with him, whether he likes it or not. Crash stares forward his presence of commanding respect as he approaches the cottage. Master Lugia, perhaps it would be wise to enter cautiously, prepared for any eventuality. We cannot underestimate Trico's cunning or the potential dangers within. Roger nods his posture tense yet resolute. Agreed. Lugia, stick close to me and be ready to defend yourself if needed. Chaos, you take point and scout inside first. Once you cleared the way, we'll follow suit. There is one problem with your plan. For some reason, being close to... Close to where the machine is located is apparently having an effect effect on me again. I am starting to have another dizzy spell, and this one feels way worse than the other ones. Oh no, Trenton, not again, please! Reggie is going to an alarm, concern edge across his face as he sees it my condition con the, the disorienting. Hey, we need to get him inside and stable right away. This can't happen near the machine. Hey, so it calls around Lugia, supporting his weight as the dizzy spell intensifies. Fear not, Mr. Lugia. I shall carry you safely into the cottage where we can assess and address the distress. Reggie watches Angela as Kranz carefully transports Lugia inside the entrance. Hang in, hang in there, little guy. We almost got you to safety. 
Just focus on breathing and staying with us, okay? Once inside, Rexy helps ease Lugi onto a soft cushion. His expression a mix of worry and resolve. All of a sudden... ...comes into the cottage... ...and says... Hey, what are you doing inside my house? You are not supposed to be here. Trico, you deceitful scoundrel. We're here to put a stop to your nefarious plans once and for all. Retsy growls, stepping forward to confront the Star Trico. Your house is a den of evil where you conduct twisted devices. Concoct twisted devices to manipulate and control others. Well, that ends today. Return Lugia to normal and dismantle your mind controlling machinery or face the consequences. Kranz positions himself protectively beside Rexy, his, eye, his eyes glowing ominously as he regards Trico. You have overstepped your boundaries, Trico. Your actions will not go unpunished. Surrender now, and we might show mercy. Resist, and you shall face the full force of our wrath. says, I don't know what you're talking about. You look fine, Rexy. The only weird thing I see I see is a tiny Lugia sitting on my couch. That's the only weird thing you see. Don't play dumb with us, Trico. We know all about your zombie-making machine and how it turned me into... Well, whatever this is. Rexy says, gesturing to his own undead state with a mix of frustration and recognition. And yes, Lugia's size is indeed unusual, but that's the least of our concerns right now. Focus on the fact that you create a mindless, flesh-eating monster out of my best friend. That's unforgivable. Crayon's serpentine form eludes with agitation. Enough games, Trico. We demand the truth and rest rest restitution for your crimes. Hand over your abhorrent device and restore Lugia to his natural state, or suffer the consequences of our righteous fury. Rexy's voice takes on a pleading tone as he addresses Lugia. Little buddy, hang in there. The Pokemon says, Why would I do that? All you all have done is made fun of me. Especially your friend there. If he isn't. 
that Lugia. Why do you think I would lift the curse? Oh my. Oh my gosh. Curse! Curse! You call turning innocent creatures into a monsters a curse? Rexius finds his voice rising in indignation. You're the one who unleashed this hor horror upon us, Trico. And now you expect us to simply forgive and forget? Crash's forked tongue darts out, tasting the air as he considers Trico's words. The Pokemon speaks truth, Trico. What? If your intention was to mock and belittle us, then your scheme has succeeded. However, if you genuinely believe you have cursed us, perhaps there is a glimmer of redemption for you yet. Righteous gaze softens like a hand of empathy creeping with his undertone features. Tell you what, Chico. The Pokemon says, What? What is the deal? Alright, listen up, Trico. Rexy begins, his tone firm yet measured. We're willing to hear you out, but any attempts at deception or manipulation will be met with swift retribution. So, cut the crap and give us a straight answer. What exactly did you hope to achieve with your zombie-making machine? Crash's eyes narrow, his body cooled and ready to strike at Trico if Trico tries anything underhanded. Be honest, be honest Trico. We want to understand your motivations. Not for putrid moral lies. The truth, however bitter, is the only path forward. Rexy leans in closer, his voice taking on a warning edge. Remember, we have the upper hand here. You're the one who created this mess, so it's time to clean it up. tries to manipulate Rexy and the snake by saying do you really believe I did this for no reason your friend made fun of me and kicked me off of his show And now, I'm getting revenge. Don't you dare fall for that. Oh my gosh. I, I was under hypnosis for that one. Revenge! Retsy scoffs his undead face twisting in disgust. Using mind control technology to turn friends into mindless zombies is your idea of revenge? You've crossed the line, Trico, and there's no going back from this. Crash's body language remains tense, his forked tongue flicking out to taste the air as he processes Trico's words. While it's true that Rexy may have underintentionally hurt your feelings, uh, resorting to such extreme measures is utterly unjustifiable. You've betrayed the trust of those you claim to care about, and for what? A misguided sense of vengeance. Reggie's voice takes on a metallic tone as he reflects on their friendship. I remember when we were just two Pokemon hang what? When we were just two Pokemon hanging out, sharing laughs and adventures. Oh, uh, Rexy. 
You're a dinosaur. Not a Pokemon. I knew you were stupid. Oh my gosh. Excuse me? Rexy retorts, his undead cheeks flushing an eerie shade of green. Oh, that's creepy. Stupid! How dare you! I may not be a Pokemon, but I'm far from stupid, thank you very much. Kratos chimes in his voice low and menacing. Indeed, Trico. Insulting Rexy's intelligence is a grave mistake. He possesses wisdom beyond your comprehension. Despite your attempts to belittle him. Rexy steps forward, his posture imposing as he looms over Trico. You crossed the line, Trico. Calling me names won't change the facts. I'm a victim of your twisted scheme, just like Lugia. And now it's time for you to face the consequences of your actions. Craner's pulls tighter, preparing to strike if necessary. Will you leave me alone? This is not fair. Two against one. It would be three. If your friend wasn't passed out. Friend was not was not Fair. Fairness has nothing to do with it, Trico. Rexy growls his voice away with barely contained rage. You chose to act un unlaterally to harm those closest to us without regard for the consequences. Now you must face the repercussions of your actions. Kratos glares forward as cold reptilian eyes fixate until on Trico. Rexy is right. This isn't about fairness. It's about justice. You strong... You saw chaos and destruction, and it's time to reap what you sown. Rexy's undead form trembles with a mix of anger and sorrow. I never thought I'd be fighting you, Trico, but your betrayal leaves me no choice. Oh my gosh. Do you want me to show you how I'm afraid I am of you? Afraid. I am of you. Question mark. Triton is stupid. And him being the tiny Lugia. Proves my point. He could have been a big, giant, majestic looking one. And instead, he's tiny and useless.
just like himself. Oh my gosh, did he really just insult me when Rex is already hissed? That is the worst time when they use the word hissed when there's literally a snake in the room with me. And my brain's instinctively going, snake, or hissed. Jamming out the words, I'll be back.